God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that you would speak your words to us this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every year on Easter morning, thousands of people will gather around the world while it is still dark. They will get out of bed, bleary-eyed, facing the chill of the early morning hours, running for coffee, and gathering outside with other like-minded folks. It will be so early that even the birds will be still. In those silent, dark moments, they wait, wait for the sun to slowly rise above the horizon and to bring with it the good news that the tomb is empty. Maybe you are one of the folks who were up early this morning, anxious to greet the dawn and celebrate the resurrection. Or maybe you were one of those folks who think to themselves, as I do every year, eh, the tomb will still be empty later in the day. I'll go to the 10.30 service after I've had my breakfast and coffee. And you would be right. The tomb is still empty. As I said to someone earlier in the week, Jesus will still rise whether or not we are up at 6.30, right? So why bother having a sunrise service at all? We have sunrise services because John tells us that the first Easter started when it was still dark out. Early on the first day of that week, while it was still dark out, Mary went to the tomb. Luke tells us the same thing. We know, though, that the Gospel of John begins and ends with that same image, that same message. There is darkness, but in that darkness is a light. John begins with those famous words, In him was life, and that life was the light of all men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John weaves these images of light and dark throughout his gospel, so it should be no surprise at all that as we come to the end, we once again find ourselves in the dark. When John tells us that Mary went to the tomb while it was still dark, he is telling us something more than just the time of day. The last time John mentioned Mary, she was standing with John and Jesus' mother at the foot of the cross. She was close to Jesus, following him to the very bitter end. For her and the other disciples, these past few days had been very dark indeed. Here in Cockeysville over the last week, the sun has been shining. The weather is finally beginning to get warm. I um, have a child who wore shorts on Tuesday. The first signs of spring are popping up around us. But maybe in spite of the weather... These have been dark days for you too, like Mary and the disciples. Maybe you recently laid to rest a loved one or heard news that you never hoped you'd hear. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage or your job or in school. Maybe you're having health trouble or the depression is flaring up again. And whatever the reason, there is darkness all around. Darkness that no amount of daylight savings time can begin to permeate. As much as we should celebrate on Easter morning, we must also first acknowledge the darkness and the pain that comes before. There is light and life and hope, yes, but Easter starts in the dark. In fact, the resurrection happens in the dark of the night. No one knows how or when. There's no mysterious star shining in the night or choirs of angels singing the good news. There are no gifts from faraway kings or smelly shepherds gathered around. There is only darkness, silent, unobserved darkness. The greatest miracle in the history of the world has no witnesses to the event itself. No one knew it happened until Mary, still in the darkness, went to the tomb. We all have shadows, darkness in our lives. And sometimes it is tempting for us to live in the shadows. Sometimes we, like the disciples, want to hunker down behind locked doors. We want to shut out the world and circle the wagons and protect ourselves. We want to heal and to be safe or, if nothing else, to be numb so that we don't hurt so badly. When it is dark and we cannot see beyond the grief and the pain and the doubt, it is tempting for us to think that God has given up on us, so we may as well give up on God and maybe even on ourselves. But as long as we do those things, we remain in the dark. 
The resurrection comes whether we know it or not, whether we are up for it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. The resurrection comes. Mary could have stayed in the dark, safely behind closed doors with the other disciples, but instead, the darkness of her soul propelled her forward. She goes to the only place she can think to go, to the last place that she saw Jesus. She goes where she thinks Jesus is just so that she can be close to him. She knew that he was dead, and yet she goes because the only thing that she thinks will ease her pain, the only thing that can lighten the darkness, the only thing she can do is to be physically close to him. And it's there that she discovers things are even darker than she thought, because now even his body is gone. So she goes back to where Peter and John and the other disciples are hunkered down and they come with her and rush into the dark just long enough to confirm her worst fears, to witness with her that yes, Jesus is gone, and then they leave. But Mary stays rooted where she is, unwilling to go, wanting more than anything to be near Jesus wherever he is. She weeps, overcome by just how deep the darkness has become for her. And even the appearance of angels cannot shake away that darkness. It isn't until her name is spoken by the one who named her before she was born that the light dawns and the morning has broken. In the rising dawn, she experiences the reality of the resurrection. Christ is risen. Death has been overcome. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. There at the tomb, Mary discovers that the night will not last forever, that dawn is coming, that God's mercies are new every morning. As surely as the sun will rise, God will be here. With the rising dawn, our own ability to overcome the shadows of our lives is assured because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. His victory assures our own. Now, not everyone can be like Mary. Not everyone can find a way to venture even further into the darkness in hopes of finding the light. There are plenty of us who are overcome by the darkness, immobilized by pain and fear and doubt, or who are held captive by unjust systems that keep them in the dark. Our job as people of the light, as Easter people, is to shine the light of Christ in their lives. Does anybody have a compact mirror in their purse? It's like a shower game. Can you give it to me, Chandra? You win. I have no prize. Maybe Bill has some extra jelly beans he can give you as your prize. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, there's an author named Robert Fulgham who wrote uh, the book called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And he says that at the end of a conference or a lecture, when the speaker asks if there are any questions, he likes to ask this. What is the meaning of life? Can you imagine, first of all, being a conference lecturer and having somebody raise their hand and ask that question? I am never inviting him to anything I do. Fulgham says that most often that question is met with laughter and eye rolls, right? People dismiss it as a throwaway question because how are you going to answer that? But he keeps asking it because he keeps hoping that someone will have the answer. So many years ago, he spent two weeks on the Greek island Crete participating in a peace institute designed to facilitate healing between the Germans and the Cretans. And at the end of the two weeks, the institute's founder, a man named Alexander Papaderos, asked the group, do you have any questions? And the group was silent until Fulgham asked, what's the meaning of life? The rest of the group laughed at the question, thinking that he was just being flippant. But Alexander Papaderos didn't laugh, and he didn't dismiss the question. Instead, he told this story. When I was a small child during the war, we were very poor, and we lived in a remote village. One day on the road, I found the broken pieces of a mirror. A German motorcycle had been wrecked in that place. I tried to find all the pieces and put them together, but it was not possible, so I kept only the largest piece, this one. And by scratching it on a stone, I made it round. I began to play with it as a toy and became fascinated by the fact that I could reflect light. See if I can, oh, there it goes. I can reflect light into dark places where the sun would never shine, into deep holes and crevices and dark closets. It became a game for me to get light into the most inaccessible places I could find. 
I kept the little mirror, and as I went about my growing up, I would take it out in idle moments and continue the challenge of the game. And as I became a man, I grew to understand that this was not just a child's game, but a metaphor for what I might do with my life. I came to understand that I am not the light or the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, knowledge is there, and it will only shine in many darker places if I reflect it. I am a fragment of a mirror whose whole design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, I can reflect light into the dark places of this world, into the black places in the hearts of men, and change some things in people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. This is what I am about. This is the meaning of my life. Now, there are some of you here in this room who have already experienced the light of Christ. You have recognized Jesus as the Messiah just as Mary did and have been transformed. You now know the meaning of your life. There are others in this room who maybe still find themselves in the dark. Maybe like Nicodemus, you have questions but have not yet been able to take the next faithful step. Or maybe you've been hurt or are deep in the depths of depression, isolated and lonely like the woman at the well, worried about what you've done and what God will do. Wherever you find yourself, this is the good news today. We hope for you and experience with the risen Christ. We want you to know that the cross says that the worst thing is never the last thing, that death is not the last word. Hear Christ call out your name and reach for you. Come to know that light shines in the darkness. And if you can't yet, if you're not yet ready to do that, let us be the reflection of that light for you. Let us shine light into the dark corners of your life just like Alexander did with that mirror until you can be for yourself a reflection of God's love. Friends, whether you saw the sunrise this morning or not, May the rising dawn shine in your life this day, and may your life shine the light of Christ into the darkest crevices of this world, so that all might know that the light has come into the darkness, and that the darkness shall not overcome it, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Okay, no. Christ is risen, people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray.